answer. Because you are that, you are capable. You are gifted and you are so unique. All of the things that you may hate about yourself are your strengths. It's okay to be soft. It's okay to be opinionated. It's okay to be different. And it's so okay to just be you. The world awaits to receive you. All right, so we're going to get started with this reaction video. You're here with your host, Grace Levi. And this is going to be my second reaction video that is related to Tasha K. And I know, I know it seems weird, but I just have to address some things because here on the Censored Enlightenment Talk, we're here to elevate the conversation and address some of these issues that we're seeing with our so called black leaders are uh how you say viral youtube persons and tasha k is one of them that we definitely need to address so we're going to do a reaction video related to what she said specifically in her interview that she did most recently and let me make sure that I have their names with Real Life Productions. So shout out to Real Life Productions. I just want to do a reaction video to some of the things she talked about in regards to her son coming on Tasha K's show and some of the things that her son actually experienced. So we're going to talk about this. And um, without further ado, let's listen to what Jag got to say. And you guys are going to stop wondering why I question who really Tasha K is. I I'm really questioning it. I have to ask this because um, I I'm, I'm going to derail this conversation for just a minute. Oh, because you know, please. There's no derailment. Take, <laughs> us, take us where we're going. Uh, it's a journey. With you, you, I, I feel like you had the potential and the power to wield to create a movement of beings who could have some real thought mm -hmm. and really think for themselves. But uh, you were just gone. And I, 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 and I want, why were you just gone? Because my life was being threatened. Okay. And not figuratively. Literally, we were being hunted. It took about, what babe, about four months for us to shake, shake them off. Um, so not long after we did this interview um, and then the Storm Monroe interviews, mm -hmm. which was all infiltration. Um, Tasha Kay, I'll say allegedly <laughs> for y'all, you know. Right. So ain't nobody talking about no defamations. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we gonna get to that. Well, ain't nobody talking about no defamations. Right. She in so Africa. <laughs> allegedly, um, the gold shoe bitch. Um, she was she was hired to target me. And, you know. When I started the women's group WCW meeting, um, we opened up the Zoom room every Wednesday for women to come. And we were building it little by little, piece by piece. Uh, I found out, it took me about a month and a half to figure it out, but three of the women in the group all worked for Tasha K. Oh, damn. Um, one of the women who had positioned herself to be my right hand woman to help me build it. I mean, this bitch actually came to my house. She was invited. I invited her to my house. Um, so Tasha K had somebody in my fucking home amongst my family. It wasn't until after she came by, because we were having a barbecue that day, and just out of nowhere, even though she lived in Alabama, she just happened to be in Dallas for the weekend meeting her boyfriend, who she never saw again after that, um, and just happened to be not that far away. And 
I was wondering if we could get together and meet. Well, I'm having a barbecue at the house. Oh, I didn't know that, but bitch, I posted about it and said I was. Right. Mm. I know your notifications is on. <laughs> but it's cool. Come on. The family's here. We just barbecuing, smoking, eating, spending time. Sure. I see you every Wednesday on Zoom. Come on. What, somebody tried to break into the house? What was it, honey, about a week after that? Maybe a little less? Oh, wow. And then um, somebody faking to be an insurance agent who had an appointment with someone in the house, even though they had the wrong name, asked for their credentials, didn't have any credentials. Then we had to call the police to document it, and yada, 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 so on, so on, and so forth. It, it, it um, when they tried to, when them essays was following me while I was walking the dog, that was the day. Oh, they was um, slow creeping up the street. Oh, no. And they didn't realize, they were so busy following me that they didn't realize that my husband was sitting in a car. He, he didn't have it turned on. He was sitting in a car and he was watching them. And then when I walked up, he turned the car on. He was like, these motherfuckers have been following you up the street, slow creeping. The second that I did that, I turned around and looked at them, and these niggas start taking off. So I go jump into the car. We start following them. Mm. We got out to the main thoroughfare, and then that was that. They were gone, and I'm like, okay. We not safe. Right. Got it. So then we started figuring out, you know, are we going to stay in the city? Or are we going to move around? And then we had a house guest around that time who we found out, a um, family friend who had flown down from Philadelphia to spend some time, found out that he was informing on us, um, giving information to certain people about how we live, what we're doing, you know, what's happening in the house, who we're talking to, if anybody's coming by. When we found that out, that shit, that shit kind of fucked me up because this is somebody that I, I revered, you know what I mean, like an uncle. Um, and then we had to put his ass on a plane, get him the fuck up out of here. And then we were like, you know what, let's just shut down the house and let's figure out what we're gonna do. And then um, right before we left town to head west, we, uh, we went out to Arizona for a while with friends. Um, yeah. And, you know, we, we needed to spend some time with the people that were in my life to figure out because there was, there's been a lot of sifting through. I got 25, 30 year relationships, you know what I mean, with people in this industry and I don't know who the fuck I can trust anymore. So um, we decided to go out west, but right before we left, we had stopped up at Clyde Warren Park because we needed to walk the puppy, he was still a puppy. So I'm walking him around Clyde Warren Park because we're like, okay, we're going to get on the road. We're going to beat it through here. We'll be in New Mexico by, you know, by nightfall. So I'm walking. The dog, I'd just gotten out the car. He was still in the car at the time. And car pulls up behind us to park. Now, this is like 1230 at night. <laughs> So I was like, okay, maybe they're pulling aside too, just like we are, kind of. But then it was like this, they were at the top of the block and then they started inching down closer and closer and closer towards the car, little by little, like just creeping up. And husband says, get in the car. And I'm like, all right, so I pick up the dog, we get in the car. And then they start pulling up even tighter. I'm like, Fuck it, let's move. You know what I mean? We had a burner in the car. But if it's gonna go down like this, right. nigga, we about to have some fucking fun. Mm. So we take off from there, we pull, they follow us. And I'm like, are we paranoid? Are we too high? You know what, let's, let, I'm, like, I'm, I'm like, fuck it. Let's, let's figure out what it's really fucking hitting for. So we pulling up to the red light. 
<laughs> I said, this one's going to change, and then this one's going to change not long after it. Don't stop. Run the fucking light. So my husband takes off. They follow us. First red light. They continue to follow us. Second red light. The safety off. <laughs> oh, it's about to go down. Yeah. <clears throat> so, boom, we going. He's like, I'm like, uh-uh. Pull up to Fuel City. I want cameras and I want lights. If motherfuckers is going to see us busting shots, that shit's going to be documented. So, boom, we go. They following us. Ooh, peel off. Next thing you know, we pull off, turn the car around. We sitting there facing the street waiting for somebody to drive the fuck up. One car takes off, skids off, gets back on 35. The other one rolls right down riverfront and speed, and I mean both, speeding off. It wasn't one car, it was two cars. There was one that came to approach us. There was another one there for the ambush. They Damn. weren't expecting us to stop running lights. Damn. I guarantee you, if we had a sat at that light, that's when that other car would have came up. Damn. And it's business time. <clears throat> so we had luggage in the car. We were all packed up. Everything that we needed in the storage unit was in the storage unit. We had it west. We all have right, friends out so there. We friends we're going to stop right there because that was a lot to unpack. So, Les, we wind exactly what we heard. Now, we already know that Jaguar Wright introduced herself to Storm Monroe YouTube page before he or well, before she went into actually doing an interview with Tasha K. Now, what we all witnessed as spectators was actually Storm Monroe, his interview went viral, which catapulted him to another level on YouTube. This, in turn, allegedly made something funny happen between Storm and Tasha. That's a whole nother story because, you know, shortly after this, they fell out. OK, but let's stay focused on the topic, because at the end of the day, we need to question who is Tasha Kay? Who are you really? That's what I want to know from a woman, from a mother, from a black woman in the community, especially someone who wants to play a prominent role in allegedly celebrity gossip. That's fine. You can gossip. But when you put people life in danger. That's a whole nother ball game. When it comes to YouTube, YouTube is one platform. People talk, people argue, people are starting to outs each other, which is totally not acceptable. But we do know all that information is located on Google. And if somebody big and bold enough to show up at somebody's house, especially if they're in a stay in your ground state, I don't think that's a good idea. <clears throat> But us as the black community need to refrain from doing stupid shit like that anyway. But let's finish unpack. So allegedly, after the two interviews, things started to really spiral out of control for Jack Rob Wright. As she stated, one of the things she first noticed was that in her women's group that she started, because she says that she's a big advocate for abuse, women's rights, and other things to that nature, things to build up the black community. And this WCW group was infiltrated allegedly by one of Tasha K minions or a few of her workers. And it was pretty suspect for someone to not live in your state, to be in your state the same time where you're holding an event and this person has been on, uh, how can I say, a discord or a personal group with you for a couple of weeks. I would look like that suspect, like even if it was the opposite sex, if it was a man that I was dating and we're on the phone and we're talking and then all of a sudden I just happened to run into him right by the store in my house, by my house. I was like, how the hell did he get here? How did this person get here? So that's something we do need to critically think about. Even if people would say, oh, Jag is being paranoid, things like that happen. <sighs> Let's keep that in mind. Not only that they introduced this stranger or someone you really don't know into her family because she was having a 
family event, she got to know the people who liked her, which I mean, who liked Jaguar, and the people who may felt the way. This was would, would have been the perfect time if that was Tasha K. Minions to actually build some information about Jaguar in her personal life and see who she can pull out to actually, you know, um, dox uh jaguar rock like she tried to do with the interview that we're going to go into because there's two sides to a story the interview that she did with um jaguar Wright's son okay so now we're listening to jaguar Wright's side of the story to all of the things that we have encountered and saw online okay <sighs> baby disappointing so she says she came to the family barbecue just so weird this lady happened to be around Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So after that, shortly after this lady knew and verified where she lived, allegedly, she said she had a fake insurance agent come to her home and wouldn't leave and had a problem, you know, or just being weird. Then she talked about being followed on or in her neighborhood or somewhere by some Mexican men. Now, first and foremost, People gonna have to get their life together because they're gonna follow the wrong person. They're gonna follow the wrong person and they're not gonna get the right results. So I I I do feel some type of way because she was off guard if this really happened. And then her husband to notice it, he's good because I would have been ran down, baby. Let me see somebody watching my family. I would have been like, stop that car would have been on the sidewalk. I don't play that. I don't play that. But, you know, to each his own, he handled his business, allegedly got his wife to safety, and uh, these Mexican people ran off, okay, after they allegedly chased them, okay? Yeah, sound a little exciting. I think uh, 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 Jaguar Wright is living dangerous. I'll be telling people, us black people, stay dangerous. Our whole life is, is just dangerous, okay? So, then... This is what really makes me kind of believe that this person was sent from Tasha K because she was able to find family members who did not like her. And, and all of the people that she put in her interview or whatever had bad things to say. And it's so weird. How does she get so much connections or know who was who? Someone had to see the family dynamics. So after this point, you know, she's trying to figure out what's going on. She got a family member in her home, allegedly, and this guy is feeding information, probably trying to get some money, you know, because, you know, people like, tell me, I give you 250 for some information about Jagra. He like, fuck it, I'm not going to do it. And when she figured it out, allegedly, this is all alleged, she had to shut it down and send him home. And that is really troublesome to listen to. And this is why... <laughs> I don't keep people in my immediate circle because you don't know who to trust. People are really driven by their instant gratification, by stardom, and they're not really putting people's livelihood in their life um, in consideration. You don't go and tell people people business and what they do and where they at at certain times unless you're trying to get them killed. I mean, you know, coming from the tribe of Levi in Haiti, we don't play these type of games. We don't, these games are serious. Like, like my grandma said, this is serious. This is serious. Like, this ain't no game. You don't do this for clicks and likes. And like the YouTube streets in the black community has totally got out of control because look at who's your leader. And this is to the winos. I know it's good to be entertained and things like that, but I hope you're not possessing some of these qualities that we're highlighting in Tasha K as a woman. Okay, because if she did do this, allegedly, it's unacceptable. Not only did you put her life in danger, and you put her son in danger by actually interviewing him. That's going to be the second part, because she talks about what happens after the interview. And it's very shocking. As a mother... As a mother, and I stated this in my last review about Tasha K, you have to be a woman and a mother before you be a position, uh, a celebrity, gossip, whatever. 
because your kids see this. And these are the examples that you set. So if your daughter or your son ever wanted to do something to this nature, I'm gonna be like, hey, that's how you get down. But maybe I'm just overthinking because I lead by example. You know, I it is what it is. I'm a corn, I'm corny. But y'all love me. It is what it is. Because we live in righteous over here. We ain't perfect. Perfect is not righteous. Righteous is not perfect. But we over here trying to live right, righteous with the blood of the most high. So to the women, to the black community, we're going over this is because this is toxic. And that's why I call Tasha toxic, toxic. Okay? I love you, baby girl, but you got to get it together. You got to get it together. So moving on. She had to exit her home, allegedly, and head towards Mexico. So we're getting up to the wrapping up. Baby went to Mexico with them uh, Mexican, what do they call them? Desperados. She said, and you're going to listen to what she said. She said, I had to get down with people who will get down for me and with me and how I get down. Because these people doing car chases, coming to my house, all this stuff happens right after I do my interview with you. All of this stuff happens right after. I'll be thinking the same thing. Sheesh. All right. So she talks about the last part we stopped at is that she got followed by the second time by a car. It was a car chase. And they almost allegedly blocked her in. That's dangerous. That's how Pop Biggie died. Bebe. No, actually, that's how Pop got shot up. Let me say that. And Biggie. Huh? Am I am I saying it wrong? They keep this consistent in the industry. All I'm saying, that's why I'm playing. When I see cars that look the same, and everybody going right, going left, we all going the same direction. Bebe, I'll be pulling over. I'll go into a parking lot. I'll slow down on the side of them. Like, what's up? They be like, oh, shit. She, she crazy. Yeah, we're not about to do do all of that. So women, please pay attention to these type of things. Not only if you just do a Tasha K interview, but also because you know there's a lot of sex trafficking going on and a lot of deviant behavior going on, not only in the black community, across the whole United States. When they say demon time is activated, demon time is activated. Okay? All right, so let's continue with this reaction video we're going to listen to some more because she's going to go in and talk about basically what her what you know she her son went through and how she reacted to her son actually doing the interview and i'm going to have to give it to her. i have to give jack right the respect based on what she said here how she reacted to her son after doing the interview on miss toxic tasha k uh, <clears throat> platform and you know I guess using it to outer I didn't really watch it all but from the tone that I got is that you know we'll talk about it let's get the let's continue I have anger problems just like me so it worked um we were there until we weren't and you know it was kind of hard because you go viral so it makes it a little bit harder to hide in plain sight so, of course, no matter what state we popped up, it's she's talking about Mexico. Right. <laughs> but but during, but during that time, you uh, while you were on the road, you were doing I seen you doing a lot of interviews with Stormy. Yeah. Um, yeah. So actually, that was right <clears throat> before we left. Got you. Storm happened before we left. When we had to leave was the, when we did the Tasha K interview. Got you. Got you. And Storm wasn't supposed to get what he got. Right. But I gave it to him. Right. See, Tasha wanted him to fluff me up. She was supposed to get the big interview. But I gave it to him. I knew what I was doing. Because I wanted to see what the fuck she was really all about. You've planted <clears throat> people in my life. You've planted people around me. Y'all dox me. Then we went to Vegas and that bitch Toxic Diamond, who also worked for Tasha K. And all of this was leading up to surviving Jaguar Wright. We're doing an interview at a Las Vegas station. 
all of a sudden, Toxic Diamond just moved from Atlanta to Vegas, living out of a hotel on the strip. The night before we did the interview, somebody hit us with a message, hunting jaguars, all this demonic shit, the Illuminati's coming to get you, Clive Davis is coming to kill you, and, and, and you know, whatever, whatever. But it wasn't until we got sent another message from the same fucking account from the hotel right across from ours, and the shit was facing our hotel window. I'm like, oh. Oh. Oh, they y'all playing, playing, playing. So shit. we ended up having to leave early. Um, we got a phone call from a trusted source. We had to leave because somebody was coming up the service elevator for us in an hour. And I'm glad I still have friends in Vegas. So then they try to stall out our luggage because we weren't allowed to take our luggage down. The bellman had to take it. Our luggage was rifled through and robbed from the time it came down from the suite to the car. They kept trying to keep us there. I had to press the issue to get my car. And I'm like, y'all motherfuckers is doing too much. If I want to check out early, I should be able to check out early. Oh, well, this is only happening because you're checking out, you know, early. What do you mean because I'm checking out early? If I want to check out fucking early, I should be able to check out early. Right. Right. You, you starting to make it sound like you're trying to keep me here. Is there a reason why you're trying to keep me here? See, there's a moment when North Philly just <laughs> kicks right in. I'm sitting there talking to the valet guy. Ma'am, I don't know why it's taking so long to get your car. It usually doesn't take this long. And I looked at him and I said, I want you to understand something. You getting me my car right now is good for you. <laughs> because if they come, I'm going to grab your ass and hold you close. <laughs> and you're going to get touched right with me. Now go get my motherfucking car, bitch. And you knew I wasn't playing. Oh, you don't want to get my car? When the motherfuckers come, you're going to be my shield, baby. Kevlar! Mm. Got my car. You were able to finally get to the luggage. He had to go and track the luggage down. Couldn't find the bellman that had our shit. He went on break. So he came up to the room. It took our shit to bring our shit downstairs to meet us in the lobby with the car. But while he took our shit, he went on break. <laughs> I made enough noise. We did what we had to do. And we got back in the desert. Now, we're going to wrap up this commentary about this specific uh, topic, what she was talking about. But what I can say is that this situation is totally out of hand, period, point blank, period. Coming from a position, if I was looking at these women as sisters, <clears throat> as people in the Black community, sitting down with them, the first thing I would say that this shit is unacceptable and it totally got out of hand. We have to know the difference between what is reality and what is not. YouTube is not a reality. There's a lot of people who teach on YouTube like I do. People hold seminars, things like that. We do a commentary about things we feel about, things we learn, and celebrity gossip and much more. We have to keep it like that. We have to keep it like that. So when things escalate to the nature of what she is describing, and I and I'm and I won't believe that this woman is making up all of these incidents. I can't believe it. And if they happen like this and have nothing to do with Tasha K, how unfortunate and what type of dumb luck is that? And I will start to look at things as being suspect as too. You know, especially if you're getting death threats, you know, I would assume that those threats were coming from you know, the wino, because, you know, that's where a lot of the, and the barbs, you know, I don't know who's doing what, but I know, you know, some of the commentary that um, Jaguar Wright has been talking about been going directly against these two individuals, which is Nicki Minaj and 
Tasha K. In any regards, there is no line being drawn here. There is no line being drawn here. And this is why things in the black community always lead to death and destruction. I, I know other nations do other stuff, but I'm not talking about other nations. I'm talking about us because we're, we have an ego that's so big and we're ready to sell each other out for money, for clicks and views that we literally put each other life in danger because we have people who are emotionally liable, people who are desperate, people who will do anything for money. And then they take these things to a stream and we have people who are being harmed. And I think, you know, just listening to what happened when she was in, in the Vegas hotel, I am going to question. And I do got to question you, Jack. How did you know that the message came from across the street? That was like, what? Now, I need to know that. That's one thing. I don't know. I'm not really big on technology things that y'all have. Y'all probably have some other stuff on your phone. Know where the call coming from. Hook me up. Because that was just a little weird. But the next call that she got allegedly told her, hey, get up out of there. You got somebody about to come up there. And it's about to be some Vegas uh, thing. You remember they had that shootout in Vegas a couple years ago where the guy was in that hotel and shot up the whole... Um, it's like it was a country concert. Yeah. Coming up the freight elevator. You know, so, you know, I will feel uncomfortable, too, if one, I, regardless of all this stuff that just happened. I'm like, y'all about to get up out of here. And even if this did not happen that we just all talked about is somebody took my luggage where I was staying at and I'm ready to go. Like maybe I have a family emergency, whatever it may be. And the same person who take my luggage can't be found. My luggage can't be found. And allegedly that person that went on break. Then my luggage is rammed through and allegedly things missing. I won't be happy. I will be pee to the ultimate pissedness. I'm just going to keep it real. But in a situation like this, for her to say what she said, allegedly, well, you're going to be Teflon. Baby, get moving. You're going to be, because this is life or death. This this severely bothers me. It bothers me. How the did the situation get so far? How we have two prominent black women here, different platforms that should be able to agree to disagree, love to hate and keep it moving, but respect each other. Now. I say, you know, relationship issues is a two-way street, personality issues, and then mental issues. I already stated this when I went on the Wally show. I'm Grace Lashley. I'm Grace Levi. And when I went on the Wally show and I talked live, I talked about the mental illness that's going on on the YouTube streets. These people who you're looking at is being content creators literally are diagnosed with so many different things. Now, I'm not saying, oh, they, they, you don't listen to them. They crazy. They don't know nothing. It's not that. You can learn from everybody. You can learn from a baby. This is something I have learned throughout my whole life. I love to learn and listen to people, you know, just kind of like see where they at, what they experience. But when you have people who are constantly in the mess, emotionally liable, manipulating situations between each other or to, to see things happen and literally create, create scenarios, that tells me that we got a lot of bipolar people in these YouTube streets, okay? And when I said this to Wiley, he was like, oh, how are you going to diagnose people as being bipolar? A nurse can't diagnose. He got on me. I said, baby, I'm not about to let you get on me about that. I love you anyway. You my bootski. I will not let you flip that on me, but I will say your behavior, your manipulation is showing exactly what I see. Mm -hmm. So we end that conversation pretty well. Always love Wally. And then a week or two later, oh, I'm bipolar. I don't remember. If they tell me to court, I ain't trying to hear it. I don't remember. Hey, I, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Wally. Shout out to my, to my best friend. Let me stop. I love Wally, though. And at the end of the day, I really respect him because he keeps his commentary raw, uncut. Sometimes he be trolling, but we understand Wally. We know where his heart is at, but he keeps it real. So shout out to Wally. 
But back to Tasha, Toxic Tasha K versus Jaguar Wright. If that was me having to flee, it would have been a problem. I mean, that right there would have solidified. I would have knew something is not right. You tell me what you would have felt. Tell me that this woman, Jaguar Wright, is imagining all of this. Please tell me. Tell me how. You that baby, I dealt with a lot of mental health as a nurse, okay. And I ain't need never, I well, let's say, come up with an elaborate story like this. Like this, no, it'd be blocks and pieces of story and flight of ideas, but this, no, 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 no. I can see it in Jaguar eyes. You see them fingers. Somebody's not lying. I mean, that's just my opinion. Allegedly, all this stuff happened. But so I, I gotta ask when when you speak your truth, does that make you not want to actually speak out and actually keep it as real as you kept it in these interviews? There have been days where I thought to myself, maybe it's just too much trouble. Oh. And then I remember, that's my fucking purpose. And that's their purpose, to make me as uncomfortable as possible. So I won't want to speak. That's the objective. So all I can do is make smart choices. and believe that everything that happens, happens for a reason. Even if I lose my life, it was meant to be that way. Like I said, talking to y'all earlier about faith. Yes. What, we re what do I really believe in? I believe that everything that happens, happens within the will of God. Happy mm. Shabbos. I believe that everything that happens, happens within the will of God. That means everything that I've said, everything that I've done, everything that I have, that has happened, that's about to happen, it's happening. I'm sorry. Because you are that, you are capable, you are gifted, and you are so unique. All of the things that you may hate about yourself are your strengths. It's okay to be soft. It's okay to be opinionated. It's okay to be different. And it's so okay.